Hey you, how's it going? My name is Ruby Price and welcome to a week ago. So for those of you who care about continuity, do go and check out the a week ago vlog from a week ago. What's going on back there? So I have just been reliably informed that it is Trans Awareness Week this week and I thought because it's this week I could tie it in to a week ago. So this a week ago is, you know, Trans Awareness Week. So for each day, I'm going to talk about a trans topic that you guys could be made more aware of. So, I've just been planning it out. So, each day of this week, I'm going to talk about a topic. And today's topic is trans creators that I am aware of. So, strap yourselves in. I'm going to throw some trans creators at you right now. So, by trans creators, all I really mean is just people who are trans that make creative stuff. Whether that's radio, whether that's... YouTube and stuff, whether that's music, etc, etc, moving along like that. A very obvious one for me to get started with would be Alex Bertie. He's a trans guy YouTuber. He tends to be a lot more popular with transitioning trans males. For obvious reasons, he's basically a slightly younger, much more successful version of me, but gender's swapped over. And I really like the way that he does his content because it's always very informative and detailed and from his engagement that clearly works. Another trans creator that I know of is Hayley, otherwise known as Palace Lungs. She's a musician. I can't quite remember how I found out about her, but she's good. Uh, there'll be links to all of these people in the description, obviously. So go and check out her SoundCloud, Palace Lungs. I can't really talk about cr trans creators without talking about someone who kind of showed to me that I could be in radio, and that is Stephanie Hurst. She's She's been on this channel before, twice, and she currently hosts the Stephanie Hurst show on BBC Radio Leeds, and if you are able to listen to BBC Radio Leeds between 9 and 12 every weekday morning, it's definitely worth a listen to. I listen to it most of the time when I wake up, and it's a fun show. Another musician that I follow is Jake Edwards, trans guy, I believe non-binary. This year released the EP Pink and Blue, it's an incredible EP, and there's a lot of heart and soul behind the music in it. With the right support and the right strategy, I reckon Jake could have an incredible 2019. There are obviously other trans creators out there, but these are just a few that I thought I would bring awareness of. So if you know of any trans creators that I should be checking out, leave their usernames in the comments, it'll be really good to check them out. And if you're looking in the comments now as well, look at those people too. So as a rule, I generally don't watch movie trailers because they're usually full of spoilers and plot details, but Detective Pikachu is a thing, and I've never really understood it. But I just came across the trailer accidentally on Twitter, and I think it looks absolutely hilarious. And like, it comes out next summer, and I really want to go and see it. Ryan Reynolds Pikachu. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds as Pikachu, and the guy from Jurassic World, the Fallen Kingdom. <laughs> it might be shit, for all I know, but wow, that looked hilarious. If I actually understood anything about Detective Pikachu. So yet again, I'm talking directly to you about what's going on with a week ago, because I want to know what you guys are watching it for. Not like a, oh, why are you watching this? Like a genuine, what parts of a week ago do you like? I'm gonna keep asking. Right, I'm off to Boston. Which is where I've spent most of today, to be fair. Hence why it's probably been a little bit boring so far. It's unusually bright outside, as proven by this. What? Yeah, I did not want to get out of bed this morning. It was nice and cosy. But unfortunately, someone had to go to the shop and buy food. And that was me. But on the bright side, we now have bacon. We've had this space, haven't we, Neil? It's, it's troubling. It's very troubling. It certainly should be. We're bacon again, Mum. <laughs> yeah. It's this camera angle again. That can only mean one thing. Welcome to cooking with rubes. <laughs> I say cooking, it's baking this week, so baking with boobs. But yeah, today I'm making a cake. I'm using an all-in-one mix from a cooking book that my mum has had since, like, 1912. And for it you need 100 grams of butter, 100 grams of cast sugar, 2 eggs, 
100 grams of self raising flour and a teaspoon of baking powder. So let's let's bake. Let's 420 bake it, but not that way. So using a big mixing bowl, what you want to do is crack the eggs in. Uh, these are blue. Some Jamie Oliver crap right here. Measure out 100 grams of butter. 100 grams of butter. Check. 100 grams of sugar. And 100 grams of self-raising flour. And not forgetting the last ingredient, a teaspoon of baking powder. It's gonna get baked. So using a wooden spoon, what you're gonna do is you're gonna mix it together until it forms a dripping consistency, whatever that means. So once it reaches a particularly gloopy consistency, <coughs> is the word I'm gonna go for, you pour it into a cake tin to make it look like a cake. Come on, come on, drop in there. You belong in a hole. Get in a hole, get in a hole. Hey. So what you want to do is, you know, spread it out so that it fills the cake tin and it's particularly flat and it's also consistent height, let's say, thickness, whatever you want to call it girth some people might use and just make sure you get as much as the cake mixture as possible if you're making it for yourself and you've been hygienic and washed your hands feel free to just push it into the cake mixture with your fingers so now we have something that looks like this which will make its way into the oven once my mum has finished making her own cake. Now, the interesting thing about making a cake is it's a bit like Brexit Britain. It tastes amazing before it becomes the cake. There are a lot of people who will say that you're not supposed to eat the cake mixture before it goes in because it's raw and contains eggs and stuff like that. But it's just so nice that Whilst I say don't do it, it is a lot better than before it comes out of the oven. See, so yeah, I'm just going to eat cake mix now until I can use the oven. Well, I have a free oven, so in goes the cake. And that'll stay in there now for 15 minutes, so if you're like me, and like to be organised. Hey Siri. Set the timer for 15 minutes. So I'll see you in 15 minutes. Uh, 15 minutes later, it's not ready. In fact, I think it might have gone wrong because it currently goes like that in the middle. The one time I choose to film me baking and I mess it up. Welcome to Baking My Rubes. <laughs> okay, time will tell. Is this cake a cake? I mean, it's more like a polo. And then when it comes down, yours is going to be a sponge that you do the underneath upside down cake they're called. I think you probably something there. <laughs> Idiot! So yeah, once your cake comes out of the oven, turn it upside down if it's messed yeah. up. Yeah, that's why you call it an upside down cake, it's really good. So leave it for half an hour to 40 minutes and then we're going to put a dusting of icing sugar on. Because we ain't got enough butter to make icing sugar, so. Right, my in the middle. What you want to do with that half an hour slash 40 minutes is up to you. Hmm. But keep it to yourself. So today's Trans Awareness Week topic is lying, in inverted commas, to the uh, therapists and stuff in order to get advanced treatment because it came up on my Twitter feed as a thing that people have been doing and I thought I would talk about as to like why people are doing this kind of stuff because today it was announced that now a trans waiting list for the NHS clinics and stuff is looking at a minimum of two years for trans people before they get treatment and that's only once they've actually been originally referred to the clinics themselves 
Two years is a very long time to be in a body which is changing in negative ways and that it's no wonder that 50% of trans people in the UK have attempted suicide, not just considered it, attempted it going to Stonewall figures. When I was being referred to the gender clinic, one of the things that a friend of mine told me to do was lie because obviously it's not a flat out lie but exaggeration and stuff like that. It's more likely to speed up your um, referrals and treatment consideration processes and that's just something that is currently the state of what trans people are having to do in order to gain access to these treatments. Whether you think that's wrong or right, it does show that there are flaws in this system which systematically you know, put the people who can't afford to go private at risk of causing damage to themselves, potentially suicide because they're not getting this treatment which I always say I got lucky I with timings, it only took me about a year and a bit if that from my first appointment to having all the stuff sorted. It's just important to bear in mind really, that's all. Educate yourselves, day two. Bacon with roots continued. Yes, and that's the moment of truth. So that's my dessert for tonight. You've been watching Cooking with Roots. Or Baking with Roots. So last night we were watching Daredevil. And uh, my mum fell asleep during the second episode. So we're having to re-watch it. <sighs> so, um... Today I think I've had a bit of a realisation that I can't keep doing this. Not this, just the whole doing nothing thing. Mentally it's no good, productively it's no good either. I'm really trying to get somewhere with my life and just nothing's going right. Hopefully you don't watch these vlogs for your own personal escapism from uh, mental health or anything like that. And if you do, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So yeah, two days down, five more to go of this week. Well, I slept in again. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so today I'm at work and... Well, I say today. Tonight I'm at work, so it's just a case of finding something to do for the next six hours. I had thought up a video idea for this week, which ties into an Instagram story that I actually posted yesterday. But I just don't think I have the motivation to do it this week, because I'll give you a few details now and... If you're watching this on Monday, I won't have filmed it yet, probably, so let me know what you think. But it's kind of like, I think sometimes people forget that I am still human and actually have, like, human feelings and stuff. Because some of the messages I get, some of the comments I get, they just treat me as though I'm, like, an answering machine or Google. I don't mean that in a harsh way for some of them. Like, some of them are genuinely just curious and want educating, but, like, I get a few comments and questions that are like, you wouldn't ask to someone who you don't know, and something along those lines. But I just don't, I don't have the motivation to film that today. I've also had more ideas for the uh, music video for the song that me and Chess have been recording, and that tends to keep me awake at night. Like, I just have these flashes of ideas whilst I'm trying to go to sleep and it just yeah being awake at like 3am just thinking up ideas for a Doctor Who themed music video no wonder I wake up at 12 o'clock well my tomorrow just got considerably better as you'll find out tomorrow but yeah I'm happy well today's trans awareness topic of the day is being openly trans online because it kind of ties into what I was saying earlier today about like people messaging you because you are so open thinking that you are always open and yes my transition has been documented online because I had a YouTube channel before I was tra before I was publicly trans I made videos whilst I was transitioning and then I made a lot of videos about transitioning as well which basically made me a candidate for people who are looking for more answers to find stuff. But it also means that people who are looking to demonise trans people and people who are looking to be aggressive towards trans people have a target. And I've experienced all of these sides being openly trans online. Yeah, sometimes it makes me wish I hadn't been so openly trans online because obviously I'm 
a target. Sometimes I just can't deal with the pressure of people asking me questions about it. If I'm in a situation where I put myself in, where I was, you know, things like trans talk, where I give you guys the opportunity, where I give people the opportunity to ask, and ask me questions and I get to select them. But if someone messages me and is like, I'm in this position, X, Y, Z, I need answers and I need help and stuff like that, I, I struggle to deal with the pressure to actually answer it. And often I end up not ignoring it, but just not being able to reply to that message for quite a while because I just have to build myself up to be in a position to answer that message so if you've ever messaged me about stuff like this and I'm not deliberately ignoring you I'm just struggling to respond it's just something up here and I don't know about other people who are publicly trans as to whether it's a similar case yeah that's just a few thoughts on that topic and so now I am off to work. I am working from six until at least nine tonight. I never know what time I finish on a night shift. But when I get back, I will be sorting my stuff out for tomorrow because I'm leaving early in the morning. I'm waking up early in the morning for some reason. And then I'm going out and being interviewed for BBC Radio Leeds about Trans Awareness Week. Right, let's go to work, make some money, bring on some bacon. Bacon, bacon. Well, that shift lasted long. <laughs> It's only half seven. Well, that gives me more time to prepare for tomorrow, so. Gets given a night off work, goes on Tumblr. So even though I only woke up at 12.30, I'm actually gonna try and get an early night. Don't know how successful I will actually be, because I've only been awake. Seven and a half hours, wish me luck. So I didn't quite manage the early night, but it's definitely an early start. I'm ready about an hour early, so I might get some food. I say an hour. I'm actually earlier than early because I don't trust Yorkshire Tiger buses anymore after what happened a couple of weeks ago and I was trying to get to BBC Radio Leeds. I'm actually catching an earlier bus so that I'm definitely in town early enough for the right train. Um, I'll probably just go and get a coffee from somewhere. Probably a flat white because I'm one of those people. Yeah, I'm looking forward to today because I get to talk about trans awareness on BBC Radio Leeds and I don't know if you've noticed but this channel does tend to deal with a lot of trans awareness topics including this week, but, um, as a matter of fact obviously what with me doing this whole everyday talking about a different aspect of trans awareness I'm excited, today should be a really good day which is what I needed after a few so I'm back at BBC Radio Leeds for the first time in a few weeks and I'm vlogging in public because that's never offered at all but yeah I we've pre-recorded the bit for the scene it's going on tonight you won't be able to listen to it well you will be able to listen to it but you won't be able to listen to it live because it was a week ago so check out BBC Sounds or BBC iPlayer if you still use that yeah, you know what to do. Uh, do I look like a suit it? You do look lovely. Let me get that bin out of the way. God, you're photogenic! Nah, get one more. I know what Steph means about this studio. Perfect. And then should we get a selfie? Yeah, doesn't Steph use this lock, this window usually to get a selfie like Oh, is that what she does? Yeah, she's always stood here. Oh my god, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, come on, please and go if you can. Yes, you are going mad. <laughs> ah, and I am finally home at six o'clock. So, done a bit of social media advertising for the show tonight. Uh, I'm going to be doing some tweets about Rated when it gets close to nine o'clock. And yeah, it'll be interesting to listen to myself as live, even though I'm not live. So, bolognese for D, bolognese, D. In case you weren't aware, bolognese, pasta bolognese, spaghetti bolognese, tagliatelle or penne or... I really like fusilli, tricolor fusilli. Ooh. Yeah, uh, bolognese, my favourite meal. So, if you're ever cooking for me and you want to... and you're unsure of what to cook, pasta bolognese or spaghetti bolognese, etc, etc. Just not ravioli or lasagna. Some got... BBC Radio Leeds on the TV, which 
So we're going to listen to it whilst we're having dinner because what you need in your life is food and LGBT representation. So, yeah. Evening, everybody. It is just after. Evening, everybody. It is just after 7 p.m. It's Thursday. Listening to the scene live on BBC Radio Leeds. I'm Ollie. How are you doing? I'm so excited about the show tonight. Okay, music on the way from Cheryl, Khalid, and also Panic at the Disco on the way before 8 p.m. We'll also mark Trans Awareness Week. Here on the scene, I support a safe, open space for conversation. And the show is for everyone. It's about celebrating who we are. So tonight, we'll meet two transgender women from West Yorkshire, Ruby and Rachel. It will be the most open and honest combo you will hear today. So what do you guys think? Oh, good. good. Interesting. Well, we're good. Mm. So I touched on today's trans awareness topic lightly during the BBC Radio Leeds interview and and that is about trans casting, trans casting in the media via trans portrayal and all of that. And I've made a video on this before. My opinion for the most part is the exact same. If you have a trans role in a film or a TV series that you are making, in my opinion, you have to cast a trans actor, or at least, if you can't get a trans actor for this role, you at least cast someone whose gender identity aligns with that of the character. It's 2018, you cannot excuse having a man in makeup and a dress performing as a trans woman. It's not the way that things should be done. Because all you do in these instances is just reaffirm the idea that trans women are nothing more than a man in a dress. Which is completely wrong, which is completely wrong. That's just my little two cents. So tomorrow I'm going to be on Radio Hood talking about Trans Awareness Week and YouTube and a lot of other stuff. So yeah, that's going to be fun. Tonight I'm listening to the shows rated, well the second half of the scene and then rated. It's Friday. I'm in Radio Hood for the first time in a while and that's George House. Hello. I'm talking to him about stuff. What a life it is indeed. Um, welcome back to the GH Podcast, I'm here with Robert Rice. I've had a great time so far, great conversations. Um, but let's, uh, let's, let's touch on sport now. Yeah. Um, so, you are a Coventry fan. Yes. And it's fair to say that that's... So, the uh, show with George just finished and I've managed to find a relic of Radiohead. <laughs> it's a Jamie. Hopefully, future Radio Hub manager. I can say this on this because it's not Radio Hub affiliated. Nah. Yeah. I'm annoyed because uh, I was planning. You've on... not got any resisting retrospect merch to do, plug. Do, do, the funny thing, I actually brought my resisting retrospect shirt with me to try and shell the advertisement, but I forgot. You see, <laughs> Jamie knows how to do self promotion. I am the king of That's all he does. <laughs> well, not all I did. I did a pretty good job at It's program. 90% what you did. Mm. We'll, 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 we'll call it 50-50. 50-50. But yeah, Jamie's conveniently uh, someone that I know that plays Pokemon Go. Yep. And I don't really know anyone else that plays Pokemon Go well enough to like... To give you a shine. To give me, to give me Pokemon. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's what we're going to do. He's going to give me some Pokemon. Because we're totally nerds. Yeah, totally. I don't actually even know how to trade a Pokemon. Seriously? Right, okay. I've done it once, and that was, you know... Go to your friend's list. Over summer. Oh, trade. It's right there. Just send me anything. My, the trade is me giving you a shiny building for an opportunity to be on YouTube. Oh. Right, you can press confirm. Yes. Do you want to make a special trade? What's a special trade? Special trades are when you trade shinies, a Pokemon you haven't got before, or a legendary. Oh. Yes. Yay! And there you go, you've got your Selby task. It's like, I only need Kangaskhan for Kanto now. I think I have Kangaskhan. Really? Well, he's going to sort me out Kangaskhan because he thinks his mate has two. Yeah, Kangaskhan. Oh, how did you, oh, did you hatch him from the 7th day? Ah, lucky. 
I, I, I literally just stumble across like half the Pokemon stuff that there's on because it, I don't know what's happening. Because I'm in a group, I'm in that group, I'm in two groups. Yeah. But I don't get notifications for them, I turned it off because I got fed up. Yeah. There's all people posting about what they've got. Yeah. yeah, that was Jamie, he sent me some Pokemon, he is a nice person. Yeah. And has a Scottish accent. Kind of Scottish accent. It's, it's more Scottish than, you know, my accent. True. Um, have you had a question on this yet, this week? Oh, I'm aware. Um, here's a question. What does everyone make of the new Pokemon movie? The trailer? Oh, I did actually talk about that at the start of the thing, so it ties in. Yeah, there you go. There's your question. There's your question. What do you think of the uh, Pokemon Pe Detective Pikachu trailer? Comment below. This may have been a Jamie takeover. So usually at this point when I see Mahatma, I tend to put a detailed video, but I feel they get enough exposure from me. So yeah, this is what they're getting instead. <laughs> so I've just got in, I got Mahatma's new EP, A Little Leisure, available on Spotify, Apple Music and iTunes, etc. So yeah, I was about to order food, but like all of my usual takeaways are closed, so, so I'm just gonna have a cup of tea and death whilst I'm in bed. But yeah, it's been a really good night, I've enjoyed it. It's totally worth the uh, £8 that I had to pay to get home for a taxi. I completely forgot to check my trans awareness topic of today was, so I'm just going to do two tomorrow, or maybe one on Sun two on Sunday, because Sundays are usually the crap days for this vlog, so yeah, that'll be two on Sunday, but none today. But we put the kettle on, and check if we've got any milk. We do! Numb. That feeling when you get out of bed with four hours to go till you go to work. In my defence, I didn't actually get in until about one last night. Yeah, so like I said, today I'm working at six and that means it's 2pm. I see a cat. Today's trans awareness topic is uh, trans dating or dating as a trans person. I've made a video on this before. It was a trans talk video. There'll be a link in the corner. I'm guessing that one. I always guess and I always get it wrong. So yeah, go and check that out. But um, in the context of today's vlog, I just thought I'd put some points forward about dating as a trans person. So I have dated as, before even being trans, I've dated pre-op and I've dated, uh, dated post-op. Each occasion has been very, very different because in the first occasion, obviously, I wasn't, I was trans. It was completely different. Dating as a pre-op, obviously, I was, I went with the whole gonna be upfront about being trans in the first place. Um, we were actually both trans, which I think helped, but it just didn't really work. And with the last actual dating situation, I was post-op. It just came up as a conversation piece after a few dates rather than I led with, you know, being I'm Ruby, I'm trans. Um, and that's something that I believe is the right way to go about it because it's not relevant. I'm still a woman. You're dating me. You're not you're dating my genitals. You're not dating my gender dysphoria. You're not dating who I used to be. You're dating me. Obviously, I do believe that you have to make people aware at some point. There have in the past been cases of very, very bad reactions to people who have done stuff and then it becomes apparent that they're trans and then their partners react in very, very negative ways. I do believe that at some point you have to let them know, usually before things get pretty serious because, well, for example, me, I can't have, I can't give, I can't have kids and if a partner really wants to have kids, then I feel like I owe them an explanation as to why I wouldn't be able to have kids. That's one aspect to it. Another thing that I find is that I'm always a bit more, I, I'm a bit more cautious when it comes to 
speaking of which, <laughs> I'm always a bit more cautious when it comes to dating online in particular be be because I'm trans, because in the past I've always been of the mindset of if I don't like myself, who's going to like me? And as Tinder gives me notifications, I've always found that so sometimes people unmatch you on Tinder when they find out that you're trans, which is... I've had people say, I didn't want to match with a guy, and I'm like, I'm not a guy. And yet, they still unmatch. And I'm kind of glad because anyone with that kind of mindset, I don't want to be dating anyway. That's just a few thoughts about dating, trans dating. If you are a trans person that is dating, I hope everything is going well. So we've got two fires on downstairs, and yet it's still really cold upstairs. In other news, I'm off to work. So I just finished work. Now I'm gonna have some food and then get round to editing because I wanna get ahead as usual. The more I get done tonight, the less I gotta do tomorrow. There's bound to be talk tomorrow. It's November. At least there will be well yeah, so whilst my mum and her boyfriend completely ruin getting into the Christmas spirit by playing Christmas songs a month and a week before Christmas, which is not on. Uh, Christmas songs should not be played before December the 1st, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm gonna... <sighs> I've got nothing to do to Doctor Who, I'm not gonna lie. So I just found out that Doctor Who is actually on earlier today, at 6.30, so that gives me less time to procrastinate. What I'm gonna do is tidy my room. I don't know how it gets like this. Part one of today's Trans Awareness Week topic is the GRA reforms, because that's something that's constantly in the news at the minute. And if it's not in your news, then you are clearly not aware of it. So I'll just give you some context. The Gender Recognition Act of 2004 allows trans people to change their birth certificate from the sex that they were born to the gender they identify as, and it allows you to change your name and stuff. It gives you a gender recognition certificate. That means that you are then legally recognised as the gender that you are. So for example, if I was to do it, I would be legally recognised as a woman. To do this process though, what you actually have to do is need to get two medical professionals to write a letter, and which requires money, let's bear in mind. Um, you need to get them to write a letter saying that you have gone through the stuff that you've gone through. You send that off to a board of people as alongside a load of evidence that you are living as a woman, and then they basically decide as to whether you are the gender that you are, which is a load of bureaucratic nonsense in my opinion. So that's the system that's currently in place. Recently across this year there's been a real really big campaign to get it changed to one which is more of self-ID. There was a load of consultations at the start of the year and over summer and what self-ID would basically mean is that you don't have to go through all of the expenses and having someone else determine as to whether you are actually trans enough to change your birth certificate and get a gender recognition certificate it would basically mean that you would you know say i am trans i am a woman let me change my birth certificate now what a lot of people who ha who have an anti-trans bias have been doing is jumping on the bathrooms and changing rooms and toilets scaremongering which let me debunk that myth in one point the 2010 Equalities Act allows people to use the services that align with their gender identity and there are very, very, very few examples of where you're allowed to prohibit people from doing that. So yeah, that's part one and I will see you later today for part two of another topic but about trans awareness. So, Mum wants to watch Fantastic Beasts. Well, for the second time in about two weeks, I'm watching Fantastic Beasts. The new one's out now, so I might be going to see it this week. Even though it's got Tony Dabbing. Hola! Buongiorno. So Doctor Who's over, and yeah, that pretty much means this week's done. But before I talk about Doctor Who, I'm going to talk about the final, final part of Trans Awareness Week, and that is me wanting to move away from trans content. Not entirely, because I accept that I built my channel on trans content, and... I made it kind of like my channel's unique selling point and obviously I can never move away from trans content because I'm a trans content creator. It's always going to be an aspect to it. But what I mean is not having the focus be entirely on trans content anymore. I enjoy making videos that get a good response like the trans talk videos 
and I will never regret doing my surgery video because bloody hell that's done my channel wonders. I just mean being able to make other videos and still getting engagement, still enjoying them, still having people enjoying them too because I don't want to be known as just a trans creator. I want to be known as a creator. And that's something that I think I've done well with my channel. Like, as I say, I've made a lot of videos about being trans, but at the same time, I've also made videos about not being trans, about, you know, vinyl, about bucket lists, about Doctor Who, music stuff. It's, it's not all, you know, Hi, I'm Ruby Price, I'm trans and here's a guide to hormones. Hi, I'm Ruby Price and here's a video about dilation. No, I just, yeah, this was a particularly personal trans awareness thing. I've got more to offer than just the sum of my gender identity. Watch next week, the video that I make will be about being trans or something like that. Moving on from that, Doctor Who. I really enjoyed it. I liked a lot of the references to it. I like the message, to, I like I like the idea about it as well, without going too much into detail. A lot of references and a fez. But yeah, on that note, this has been another week. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, do all that YouTube shit. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe, comment, all that other shit. Happy Movie Price, and I shall see you a week ago. Adios. Bye. <laughs>